Hello everybody, good day to you and welcome back. If this is your first time here, just welcome. I'm glad you're here. I know I'm glad to be here. What we've got is a 2011 Ford F-150. And uh, this has been featured in a few episodes already. Um, last week I put a uh, an entire new mechanical AC system in this, which uh, consisted of a compressor, condenser, um, a thermal expansion valve, and I flushed out all the lines. The uh, compressor head annihilated itself and turned itself into a brown, uh, mushy substance, which was then passed through the rest of the system. Anyway, uh, that entire system was replaced, and I noticed uh, after completing the repair that the AC was actually overperforming. Uh, oh, fun fact, I got my thermometer back too. It returned today. Uh, anyway, the system was overperforming. It was uh, making center vent temperature right around 20 degrees. Um, I think at one point I even saw 18 degrees. Now, the reason that this AC system was performing uh, so vigorously is that the evaporator temperature sensor, uh, I believe the other day, was reading 127 degrees. Now, the evaporator is the core unit inside of the HVAC box inside of the dash. Now, the temperature of that core should be around 40. 50 degrees tops maybe and it was uh the other day reading 127 degrees on the scan tool this morning we're getting 109 degrees and so it's still thinking it's hotter than it actually is now what that's going to do is cause the hvac control module to command the compressor on at a hundred percent duty cycle meaning it won't cycle on and off so it's just going to keep cooling and cooling and cooling and cooling until ultimately it freezes up part of the system. And that's what we had experienced uh, before, which took out the mechanical side of this AC system. Now I've got the, uh, as you see here, the data pulled up on the scan tool. And I've also located the evaporator temp sensor, which runs into the box right here off this little wire. It's clipped to the top and then that runs off to the HVAC control module. Now, according to the labor guide, I have to remove the seats, center console, steering column, and dash in order to get this HVAC box out of here in order to separate it and then uh, remove and replace the sensor, which is plugged into the actual fins of the evaporator. However, I don't want to do that. That's a whole lot of work and a whole lot of expense for a $20 part. So I'm going to try to work around this as best I can. Now, before I get in too deeply with this, I just want to kind of prove out that the sensor is in fact faulty. If we look here, we're looking at a 116 degrees vent temp, and I'm going to go ahead and unplug this guy and remove it from the equation. And look at that. It's saying negative 40 degrees. Now that tells me that here's the issue because if there was a short on the harness side, anywhere between this connector in any of the wires all the way over to the module or if there was a faulty module that reading would not have changed so since i've isolated this component from the rest of the circuit and i got a huge change in the uh in the pid that tells me that this sensor here is in fact faulty now i've already gone and taken the liberty of removing some of the screws that uh that clamp this uh, hbox box together and i'm going to try to separate this enough where i can reach in with some pliers to extract this sensor and uh, hopefully be in a position to install a new sensor in the same location okay let's shed some light on the subject here let's see if we can see what's going on all righty so like i said i've already managed to remove one two three four and a fifth one back there five screws that hold this thing together and i'm going to go in here with a couple of uh, soft plastic wedges and try to open this box up enough hopefully the plastic is pliable enough to give me i mean just an inch will do just enough space to get some needle nose pliers in there so i can extract this uh this sensor right here the replacement of this sensor the book time calls i think for well over 10 hours it's like 10.8 hours or something like that and i want to see if i can uh achieve the desired results in about two hours if i can that would be great and if i can't then uh well no harm no foul i suppose but uh, i'm sure the customer would appreciate the chance of saving some money and i would like to save a lot of time because this is a very small insignificant component it does a lot of a lot of work 
and I'd hate to have to pull this entire assembly apart just to get one component out. I'm kind of getting some space opened up here. I've got about a about three eighths of an inch from what I can see. But if I can just get in there. Nope. Just get in there enough where I can fit a tool into this box. We're gonna be in business. So I think what I'll do is double up on the wedges on this side just to create some pressure. And then I'll go in on this side again with that little pry driver and uh, try to open up this clamshell a little bit to gain some space. And I've got, looks like I've come up with about a half of an inch or so to work with. I cannot be too aggressive with it because I, gravity. If I break the plastic, I'm out of, I'm out of business here. And if I break, uh, if I break the evaporator core, I'm really in trouble. Okay, I've got the wire free out of its mount. And it looks like the sensor, hope you guys can see, it looks like the sensor plugs in right around uh, down here somewhere. Now I can see some of the core right there. I could probably insert a new probe into that same location or into one of these visible locations and it would perform as designed. But I wanna try to uh, extract this existing sensor first, just so I can get a good look at it. Okie doke, so I'm not really having the best of time uh, trying to fiddle this thing out. I can get a pinky finger in there and I can feel where the probe is going into the core, but I can't get enough leverage behind that, uh, uh, behind that probe to pop it out of the core. Yeah, I, the reason I was trying to get it out is I want to show you guys um, kind of what that thing look like, looks like. However, since I can't get it out, I busted out the, uh, the boroscope camera device. It's got a little camera with a light on the end of it. And we're gonna use this to go inside of here and uh, see what's going on. Now, you can see on the screen, there's the evaporator core. Oop. Let's get a better angle for our dangle here. And we're moving down in the box now. Let's move that. Okay, there she is right there. See that little square box with the wire sticking out of it? Well, that little box has a thermometer protruding from it, which is placed in between the fins on this evaporator core. Now, I can't uh, can't get that thing out. The, the probe itself is actually probably longer than the amount of space that's between the, uh, the sensor and the case. However, that will not be deterring me because I have enough space up here somewhere to install a new probe. So what I'll do, if I can't get this one extracted, I'll just go ahead and cut this wire off and then install a new probe right here at a more accessible area and then connect that one to the control module. So I think with the amount of space I've generated right here, I'm gonna be able to pull this off without having uh, to remove this entire assembly uh, from the vehicle. So let's get the new one ordered and uh, get it plugged in and connected and see how this system performs after there's a new sensor installed. All right guys, well, it looks like no good deed goes unpunished. Um, as I mentioned, the, uh, the temp sensor for this evaporator core is not available separately. It's actually part of the evaporator. Now that can't be replaced unless you get the entire assembly according to Ford. That's, that's what they told us. Uh, so I didn't like that answer. So what I did is I found a very similar temp sensor. Uh, this one actually goes to an F-250. And I got this uh, as a delivery this morning and tried to substitute this one in. However, the resistance values are way off point and it, although the old one was reading like 127 degrees at the temps or at the evaporator, this one brought it down to about 90. Now that's not gonna correct the condition so my experiment has failed and unfortunately for me, 
I've got to pull the dash out of this. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, this is probably going to be a couple more videos. This is like a six or seven hour job, I think. So I, I think I can get it all done in one day, um, but we'll see. I've got to pull, I think maybe the seats, center console. I know the dash has to come out. Then I can get that evaporator box assembly out of there. So this is going to be quite a project. So stay tuned. Enjoy. Okay, first things first, I need to start pulling off panels. I've got the side panel already off here. Trim has to come off. The kick panel has to come off. And then I've got to start just peeling away the onion until there's no more parts left. Next. Oh, don't want to lose that one. That one's different than the rest. Another one right there. Let's pull these guys out. And where's my wire? Who knows? There it is. More trim pieces to the pile. My technician senses tell me from the witness marks in these bolts that this has been out of here before. All right, we moved over here to the driver's side. I'm going to pull some more panels and stuff off. As soon as I get the right size socket again. Try again. trim's got to go because that kick panel has to go pull this guy up goodbye door trim okay, a couple more screws goodbye this is a little premature to get these but while i'm here i'll pull them out oh, gravity Okay, this little plug's got to go for the speaker in the panel, pop panel, there goes the clip, clip gravity. Okay, next up, let's lose this piece of trim here for the uh, center console, that was easy. Up, up, and okay. away. Someone's definitely been here, there's missing bolts. It's not the first one that I found that has been gone either. Okay, next up is this big piece of trim on the console and the uh, the console lid. So let's pull that guy out. Couple bolts. I believe these Torx 30s. Stuck you are. Unstuck you are. To the pile. Hmm, almost. What are you stuck on? It's stuck oh. on something. Nothing, it's just more clips that are not unclipping. I hope, I think. Got it. And another for the pile. You go right there. Okay, I need to move the seat forward because there's another bolt way down there to disconnect the center console from the floor. So let's roll this thing forward and I can get it from the back. Giggity. Yep, there it is. That's my guy right there. Wrong socket. Let's try again with the right socket. What we got here. Okay, other side. Moving on forward. Yep, there's the other one. Goodbye. This thing should be free now. Yeah, ish. Let's go back up front. Yep, there's one. I already got this one's counterpart on the other side. 
Uh, let's lose the shift cable next because that's hanging up the console here. All right, so uh, I went in and threw on the uh, head mount for the GoPro. It's gonna make editing a real pain in the butt. However, it's gonna give me uh, more mobility with my extremities. Throw those in there. Now, how do I get that cable off? That's the question. I need a miniature pry bar. turn that GoPro on too, okay. So I need to get this disconnected, then it should just push off of the pin. Okay, there's stage one. And then there's a little pin right there that the cable presses onto. It should just pop off. I may need a medium pry bar. Nope, got it. Okay, back to the pile with you. Ooh, long lost socket. Give me that. Okay, there's one harness, wiring harness on that, which is these guys over here. Huh, pinched wire. All right, this piece is pretty big, so I'm gonna start a new pile. Take a deep breath, then I get real high. Ooh, an amplifier. Nice. Okay, I found more bolts to remove. With the wrong socket, again. Where's the right socket? I just had it. Hmm, it's hiding. I do believe this bracket's gonna be in my way. And if it's not, well, then I took a couple extra bolts out for no reason. Come here, amplifier. You go back over there. Uh, there we go. You go back there in the pile. What else we got here? To the pile. Everything goes in the pile. Okay. Okay, back around to the driver's side again. Seat back. There's something over here kind of hanging up the whole show. Probably a steering column. I think I should pull that out next. Then on another wild socket hunt, because this is like a five millimeter. Little guys right there. Let's pull this thing apart, because I have to disconnect the wiring harness from the column. Oh, goody. you stuck on it's nothing to the pile
hope you guys can see. Where'd that one go? That one goes up here. All right, so you guys remember where all these things go so I can put them all back, okay? I don't wanna forget anything. All right, next, we need to get the steering shaft off. That's a 10 mil. And then I think a, a big 14 and then a, some T55s. This column should come free. Let's find my 10. Hmm. Not here. There it is. Oh, that's not gonna reach. No, not like that. Will this one do it? Yeah. Aha. Oh, really? That's not gonna reach either. We have to use an actual wrench. No power to snap. See if this little guy is gonna fit. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Yeah, it will. That's cool. back up and get in the seat so I can take the weight of this when it uh, comes free. Let's try this. Okay, so left arm's gonna hold this up. Right arm is gonna drive the tool. And we're gonna drop this guy down. There it goes, it fell down. I did say drop. That's the easy part. Putting it back is gonna suck. Now we've got to be careful to keep this oriented properly. If it uh, rotates, then it'll break the clock spring behind the steering wheel, and uh, that would be bad. So, we just set this down like so. Actually, no, I'm gonna put it over here where it's safe. And I'll lean it up against the tire so it can't really move. Day. Okay, there's something holding this up a little bit. I'm trying to move it and it doesn't seem to want to come free. I, I think there might be another uh, fastener for the uh, the core assembly that holds this to the, the chassis or to the cab actually. And I think that bolt, another bolt, I think it's back, uh, back there somewhere. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this gauge cluster out. It's only four more bolts and if I'm wrong then whatever. But I can't seem to find what's uh, what I'm getting hung up on. So I'm just going to keep pulling pieces off until I do. Uh, I don't think there's anything back here for me to see. No. No, it's not here. I wonder where it is. Yeah, see, we're just getting stuck on something here. Oh, you know what? I see it. There is a big fastener way back there. So I think I've got to get to it from, well, from the top down, but I can't, uh, can't see how I'm supposed to do that. 
Let's pull more trim off and find out. I just realized that this thing kind of hinges down. So let's pull that back and, well, I can see the two bolts back there. They're far away, how do I get to them? Does this come off? I don't know. Hmm. A little confused here. All right, well, I'll just take uh, more pieces apart and add those to the pile. Yeah, they're, damn things are way back there, but how do I get to them? Uh, this I don't know. I know there's a way. Oh, just right down through that hole. Okay, I'm silly. <laughs> uh, wow. Yeah, my line of sight was blocked. It's whatever. Okay, that's gonna be a little tough. Let's try a different extension combination. That one is just too long. And it will be hitting the window. That one's a little too short, but I, I guess it'll do. Okay, and if I reach down with my fingies, I dropped it. It's okay, I can get it from here now. There's one. That's a big one. There it is. Okay, let's go to the other side because if there's two bolts here to hold that on, I imagine that there's two more over on that side. Okay, yeah, there is one more bolt right way down there. I can I can barely barely feel it. Maybe if we go around to the outside I can see it from that angle. But yeah, there it is right down there. But I don't know if I can really reach it. Let's try that. Oh yeah, I can barely see it. That's clever. <laughs> Crack. Let's not break the glass. Oh, there goes the dash. All right. Okay, most important part. Let's take the keys and put them somewhere safe. Like right there. To the pile with that. And I think it's totally free now. There may be a couple wire connections I need to remove, but yeah, this thing's, it's free. Okay. Woo, now's the scary part. Getting this out of here. That's gonna be a two man job. All right, let's nudge this thing back some and see if I have any wires. Oh, I got a crap load of them that need to come come out. Yeah, all these connections here have to, have to come loose. Let's see. I'll reach in through the glove box. There we go. Hope I'm not blocking the view. If I am, I'm just removing the uh, wire harness connections from the dash to the rest of the harness. 
I think we got all of it. Yeah, it's uh, it was these guys right here. Let's see. Next up, I need to lose this wire. Okay, I think all the wires are disconnected now. I I just got the uh, GPS and the antenna wire off. I think that's all of them on this side. Let's head over to the other side and uh, get the next ones. After that, we've got a pop and Z hood and discharge the AC and disconnect the heater core lines and then I'll be able to pull this uh, HVAC box assembly out of the vehicle. Okay, this side's all cleared up. I had two more connections, three more down here at the bottom, um, but everybody on this is disconnected. This whole assembly is now free. I'm gonna go fetch a healthy helper and we're gonna walk this thing out of the truck. Okay, let's get this thing out of here. Uh, okay, so it's free. We just gotta nudge it in this direction. In my direction. Oh my God, this just a little bit. Well, I lied, it's not free. Okay, yep, you can set it back down. I'll call you later. There's there's another, there's a hose connection in the back. Ah, man, all right. Okay. All right, so I found the wiring harness that was hanging me up. It's this one right here. Uh, trouble is, is it's run underneath of this uh, HVAC ducting right here and I can't get it to come out. So I think I'm gonna have to pull this seat out right here so I can pull the carpet up so I can pull the ducting out, so I can pull the wiring harness out. So I'll be back in just a second once I get all that stuff removed. Okay, front two bolts are out. Um, if anybody asks why didn't, uh, or is wondering why I didn't disconnect the battery, this is why. So I have to move some of the stuff around periodically in order to service this particular piece of equipment. And two more bolts right here. Let's see, pop that cover. The mini pry bar. Got one more there. Oh, that's a long one. All right, goodbye seat connector. You stay there. Okay, I'm not gonna take the seat belt off. I think I have enough here to just kind of swing this out, and set it down over here, I think. We're gonna find out. Yeah, that's good. Right there. Okay, now. I didn't give really myself any extra room to do anything. Except maybe pry up on this. Okay, bigger pry bar. I'm not prying on anything with this. I just need something to uh, hold this ducting up a little bit so I can fish the uh, this wiring harness out. So I'll stick it in there and rotate it. And the curvature of the rod will give me just the right amount of contact, I hope, or clearance, I should say, to pull this out, I think. Yeah, Ford, built-in tool trays. Check that out. this big old mess. I just needed a connector right here. That's, that's all it needed. One connector. This thing is, oh, it's attached. It's attached to something I can feel with my fingers. So I'm gonna unattach it. 
I know you guys can't see. I can't see. There it is. That's, that's what was hanging us up. This little clip right here. Shove that in there. Let's get my pry bar back so nothing becomes deformed to the pile. Okay, let me go fetch my helpy helper. Be right back. All right. Uh, help me walk this guy out of here. Um, right there on the pillar, there's one bolt holding it in. Okay. See that? Yeah, pull that little bolt out. And it's, as soon as you pull that bolt out, it's gonna take, the weight's gonna come at you, so be, be careful. Because this thing's kind of heavy. Um, just put it on the floor. It'll go up. Hey, go ahead and climb out. Climb out, because you're gonna need that foot space a little. Look behind it, make sure it's not stuck. Ready? Everything good? Yeah, just bring it this way a little bit now. Yo, or you can climb right through. That works. <laughs> Woo! All right, and then just set her down like so. Okay, this is the prize right here. This is the HVAC box. We've got the heater core, the blend door actuators. There's one, one there, one actuator over here, the ducting. Uh, the evaporator core is housed right here in this section. Uh, there's another door actuator. That's the mode door. Yeah, all kinds of goodies in this thing. Um, okay, so before this comes out, I think I need to remove this bracket because all these wires are going to stay on the cab. So that's got to come off. Shouldn't be too much trouble. Yeah, all these little wire connections have to go. That one. This one. That one over there. Then I need to go under the hood, discharge the AC, and disconnect the coolant lines from this heater core right here. So that's what's next. Okay, so under the hood there, I have the uh, heater core lines disconnected. I have the AC refrigerant system discharged. And there are three bolts that hold it in, or nuts rather, hold it in from that side. And I think there was the one and two and one down below that hold it in on this side. So the thing is free. I'm gonna go ahead and peel it out of here and uh, get ready to take it apart. That stuff's gross. Let's, uh, let's get that out of here. Goodbye. Now it kind of hinges down and around and into this ducting right here. It's, oh, there we go. That, that was easy. I just got to remember to repeat the same maneuver as it goes back together. What is this? Hmm. It doesn't go there. But okay. Yep, there's the seal for the drain. That's the drain tube. We'll have to figure this out. That's uh, that's not good. Okay, well, gravity handled that. Uh, okay, let's go get this over on a on a workbench and uh, take it apart and dig the evaporator out of here. Come on out. What a wreck. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up episode one of this evaporator core replacement. Have no fear. My next posting will be the replacement of the components on the HVAC box and reinstallation of the dash. I hate to leave you hanging, but this was a very, very in-depth job, and there is no way I was going to be able to stick this all in one video. But that being said, have no fear. The next posting will be the reinstallation of this HVAC box after I replace the evaporator core. That being said, I'd like to thank everybody here for watching this video. I certainly do appreciate it. The only thing I would ask of you is that if you like this video, please let me know by tappy tapping that like button down below and dropping me a comment or two. So again, and as always, thank you guys for watching. 
And most importantly, don't forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later.